to our first opinions of Demoniasa. This is a 2D brawler Metroidvania. Bit of a warning for some people, there is a decent amount of pixelated blood, gore, and boobs. How you doing tonight, guys? Doing well now that you've given us that intro. I mean, I'm into pixelated boobs all the time. This this would cause quite the stir in the 90s. Um, oh my goodness. Nice introduction to the episode, Josh. Anyway, this is a game that makes one fatal error right from the start, and I'm going to get into it as the story is, is, is going here. You cannot reconfigure the buttons on the console version. Mm, okay. So anybody who is at the beginning, middle, or end of this video even considering getting this game, do so on PC where they have allowed, like, rebinding of keys. On console, don't touch it until you hear that a patch was done. Because, where do you think the jump button is? X. No. T. N R. 2. Ooh. Sounds about right. The idea being that they wanted it to be like a brawler, like okay. a Street Fighter, but in a 2D Metroidvania. Yeah. So all of the face buttons are punch, high punch, kick, high kick. Mm. There is no reason at all that you couldn't put some of those, like the high kicks and punches, on the shoulder buttons. We saw that as far back as Street Fighter 2, yep. and then let me use X to jump. Because there's two big parts of this game, combat, platforming. Even if you were able to rebind the keys, the platforming is not that precise. But if you could use the X button, for example, you could look past that. Now let's get to the actual game here. So we got some graphics proper. What are you guys seeing here from the presentation? We saw a little bit in the story, the blood and gore that I had appropriately... Uh, she can run fast. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks like they've done a really nice job with the pixel art style um, for the storyline stuff. This actually looks even almost nicer because it's just so clean and crisp. Um, it, it really looks like a, you know, a 2020, 2021 type game. I cannot say enough about the presentation as a whole. The graphics, there's no slowdown. It's absolutely crisp, like boldly colorful. The music is just kicking rock beats the whole time. And I'll get into a few of the other positives. The Metroidvania layout of the map is fantastic. There are RPG elements. So as you, as you fight, as you kill enemies, you get skill points. You can use those skill points to increase attack, defense, intellect, and luck. There are tons of treasures in the game where you will get up to eight different slots of items. Necklaces, bracelets, rings, as you can see here. Wow. And this one gives a plus two to attack. All of the like Metroidvania and even some of the combat stuff is fantastic, but the controls and specifically in combat hit detection, I don't know, I don't even know what I would call it, not hit detection. Enemies don't get stunned or knocked back by you. So if you hit an enemy that is about to hit you, they're still gonna connect. Yeah, it reminds me of the much. old like Ninja Gaiden. It's like, yeah. didn't even matter if you hit something. Unless you killed it, it was still gonna hit you. I, I'm i fine with a game that comes out uh, that's meant to be challenging, right? Yeah. If you're gonna give me a Metroidvania that maybe has um, more of like a, uh, a Souls-like difficulty, because this game, does not have auto saves. You save at save points, and if you don't, you lose any progress. That would be fine, but when the difficulty comes from things like enemies just being able to attack you, stun lock you, and while you do have a block, no like dodge to get out of the way of combat, it just feels way too punishing in a bad way. That's why you gotta jump over their attacks, man. So yeah, here, as you see, attack increases damage, defense is health and defense, intellect is for your demonic power, which are, like, special abilities, down, down, forward, punch, will give you, like, a flaming 
punch that does big uh, attack, which needs mana. And then luck is your critical hits and, you know, your um, uh, item drop. Because treasure chests and um, certain interactions with NPCs at set points will give you set gear. Uh, beating a boss in a zone will give you a new um, attack or uh, travel method that will let you... Uh, okay, here you'll see secret walls take a ridiculous amount of damage you to going at that wall. <laughs> yeah! Like, why would it need to take so long? Yeah, it seems kind of odd that... Well, even doors, like, why do they take more than one hit? Doesn't make any sense. Um, I think one other thing I can see so far with the layout that's a little problematic is the, um, the chains in the foreground. Oh, I, yeah. I don't think you should have big things in the foreground. Having, like, little things from time to time in the foreground, maybe not a problem, but definitely having something that can take out a significant amount of space can be pretty bad at times. And, and you will actually see, uh, I think in one of the later hallways, there's a treasure chest hidden behind one of those foreground items. Oh, so they really get you. And the treasure chests don't have any collision detection. You'll walk right through it. You have to hit it. So if you don't have your minimap open, or um, there are different items that will like display what's on the minimap, enemies, treasures, things like that, you could potentially just walk right by like a treasure that's for and obviously that's not a mistake you don't put something like a treasure chest behind a foreground item for no reason at all no that was definitely intentional yeah uh now the other thing you just saw me pick up a medium potion yep because you've dedicated all four face buttons to attacks shoulder buttons to uh block jump menu and uh opening and closing your mini map is one of the shoulder buttons. To use a potion, you have to go into your inventory and hold X on it for a second. Now, unlike the pause menu, going into your inventory doesn't stop the action. So if you're in the middle of a battle and you're low on health, the enemies can still be coming at you as you go into your inventory to consume a potion. That's rough. Now, here's another thing they do. You see a little number on the bottom of that door, it says 50? Yep. To break that door, you need to get one hit. That is 50 damage. Okay. So you need either like a charge attack or to increase your level so that you can actually break You can through. get lucky. That's actually kind of interesting. You can get lucky with, uh, if you have like a big attack, like the, you know, down, down, forward, punch, Hadouken, punch, whatever, if it crits when you do it, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you can come back to it once you've put on more gear that has attack power, once you've leveled and allocated a few more stats, to come back and get that. And then, behind that door was a treasure chest, but then there was also another door that I think was a 75. Um, here we're getting into the point where uh, you're going to see that there is that foreground item that I mentioned, but I don't even know what else I can say. Uh, do you guys have any other observations about this one? I think it looks pretty cool. Like, uh, there is, at times, a little... Definitely, there's a lot of noise. I'll, I'll say that much. There's a lot of noise for combat. It wouldn't be such a big deal if you were, like, stunning an enemy at the same time. But if you aren't doing that and you do have to be dodging, those that doesn't work particularly well together. Because that noise just creates problems. Wow, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's pretty though. Like that's it, just it. It's like, like it, it looks fine. I, I do like the sort of dark aesthetic to it. I I like the cutscene so far. I do like the sort of it's not super complex systems, but there's a bit to it. I do like that. I, I just from visually seeing it, this looks pretty good. Obviously, it's a little different to play it if it has control issues, right? Now, one thing I will say, I put in about six hours playing this game in order to be able to capture a ten-minute video of the beginning without failing miserably at the platforming in combat because it took me that long to get used to the controls. Wow. Thanks. All right, let's get into some final thoughts here. I will start off, which I don't normally do, because I want to stress that 
if they update the game like they did to the PC and let me rebind bind the keys to something that to some semblance of anything that a platformer would currently use, I would go back to it. But until then, I can't forgive the other shortcomings, and this is a not continue after first opinion. I would. Um, I am going based purely off of looks, because again, I can't feel the controls. I, I, I think I would want to give it a chance. Off just looks, I think it looks pretty cool. I probably would keep playing, especially if they do fix the controls. All right, so pretty much the same sentiment from all of us. Fix the controls and we're in. Until next time, live in the real world, play in a Pixel 1. Hey, did you like that video? If you did, be sure to let us know by clicking the like button and leaving a comment. If you want to be first in line for any new content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and then hit up our Facebook page. The link's in the description below to see what's coming up next.